Okay, we're recording. We're recording. All yeah, right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the October 15th uh, Forestville Facilities Committee meeting. Um, like usual, I don't have the agenda in front of me, so I'm going to look to Frank to All right. read off where we're going first. Well, we don't have a ton on here, but we do have a few things that we definitely want to revisit and mm -hmm. talk about. So um, why don't we just get a little started here? Uh, one of the first things that we wanted to talk about was just going back over the field condition conversation that we had at the board yeah. and kind of do some follow-up on it. Mm -hmm. um, Neil, do you want to talk about it a little bit? Uh, so we started discussing pesticides some more. Uh, I put a link into Rachel's, Rachel's email in there, um, and she included an article mm -hmm. as well for toxic that put it as an actual link. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this article discusses the effects of glyphosate on people, mm -hmm. which is Roundup. Yep. It's a main ingredient in Roundup. So that's not exactly one of the ones we would use on the field. We use a more targeted herbicide than a generic mm -hmm. kill everything one. Yeah. Um, Do we know what not to go too far down that rabbit hole? Is it like a pre emergent? Is it, a, is it like to stop the seeds from growing? Is it no, a, it would be a post emergent. It, it would be, yeah. Because it's, with the new laws, you cannot do pre-emergence. Oh, so that would be planning ahead and everything. Yeah. You have to wait till you have an actual emergency, and then you can ah, yeah. Plan. So you yeah. can't do anything for aesthetics. You can't do anything mm -hmm. pre-emergent, um, unless it's a known problem. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes, if you have a real bad grub problem, you can do pre-emergence for those. Mm -hmm depending on different cases and everything else and past problems. Yeah, so it would be, it's just one of the selective ones that only yes. kills the, yep. yeah, one yes. type and not another. Yeah. Definitely target, yep. yep. So that makes more sense than with, is this the one that we got or no? So we did get, um, we've been reaching out to try to find some people who can give us some insight. Yep. And we are going to the environmental conference. Mm. It's good timing. It really was. <laughs> I, was, like, and, I saw and, that. I was like, oh, that works out well. And we've been looking at it. We're actually getting more and more excited about it. And you're like, this is actually going to be really good. Uh, but one of the people who's doing it is Dr. Frank Rossi. Who I reached out to. He's one of the top environment or uh, turf management specialists in the state oh, wow. uh, country. He's from Cornell, yeah. He is, yeah. yeah, he's from Cornell. And he actually wrote the document that's part of here. So mm -hmm. he's one of the authors. Mm -hmm. Not the author, but he's part of the yeah. Correct. So he talks yeah. a lot about these things. And in this one, this is in this sports field management mm -hmm. is um, actually in our agenda. We linked it for everybody. Mm -hmm. And in it, it talks about the use of herbicides. That's management. Yeah. But yeah. in a very, and I think that was kind of in line with what Rachel was talking about is it's very minimal. Right, it's not like this isn't your your end all be all. There's a lot that you have to do, but he does kind of talk about the fact that if you get to a point where it is unsafe or you do have these, mm -hmm. you know, different roots and different things that make it or yeah, having issues, he does mention herbicides as being something that you do kind of use. So it's not like a never kind of thing, even for yeah, even for that, yeah, yeah. once every few years type deal. Because he talks about the integrated pest management, and he basically wrote the book on it as doing your overseeding doing your aeration so you have as strong a turf as possible so there's less room for mm -hmm. the weeds to move in but eventually they're still going to and even has like a sample fertilizer program for a soccer field versus mm -hmm. a football field you know mm -hmm. sample for, for low budget fields and he works with people it's like what you have manpower you have equipment you have mm -hmm. budget and everything and tries to help build what you can to make it as efficient as possible in those parameters. Is he available to do like consulting? So he yeah. reached out to him. So he's not really doing the consulting as much anymore. He pulled me in contact with another guy who kind of took over on mm -hmm. that. He's actually heading a study on non-contact related injuries on sports turf. Huh. Which so yeah, we have a ability to get in on. Which oh, uh, we're going to find out some more details on mm -hmm. that and see if it is something we would be interested in doing. So and you are you spread soil, dirt, loam, whatever you put on. I put a it was a um, compost sand mix. Okay. Uh, over at the one satellite field okay. to help level it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But to raise a soccer field the quarter of an inch to help level it out, what it should be is closer to sixty tons. And I put on twenty tons. Wow. So I concentrated yeah. in the middle of the field where the high traffic gold mouth areas are, mm -hmm. just to bring. Try and make it as good as mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 
And one of the funny things was, is I was talking to somebody and they're like, yeah, did you go over the satellite field? It's all dust. We were playing on it. And I go, that's because they just laid 20 tons. <laughs> so, I'm like, you know, they're like, oh, really? I'm like, oh, that's good then. I'm like, yeah, that was actually a good thing. Yeah. But it's just even then, like we were talking about how mm -hmm. when we're trying to fix this, it can be a, a burden for people. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there was dust and dirt everywhere because of how much dirt we put down. But then my plan was to do it last week because I also overseed it after that. Mm -hmm to work it in that much more because of the rain this weekend. So right. it's going to be a watered in since we don't have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. yeah. So, the good so it should is, be less dusty over there for yeah. the game today. Sorry, something came up in the means. Yeah. But the good thing is we're, we're still looking at the herbicides, talking to, you know, a consultant to make sure that we have some mm -hmm. in. We have the Cornell turf thing that we didn't have before. So that I think that will help you because I'm, you know, I do not know enough about turf I and mean, you do and Rachel does, but like at least with that thing, if you take a look at it, it's pretty comprehensive mm -hmm. in what you can and can't do or what you should be doing in fields. We did have a company come in once before we mentioned that we did. We have work product somewhere. Yeah, so we have it. We need to look at it. But do you want to explain a little bit about that? Yes. So they basically came in and looked at the fields and said they get used a lot, they're kind of beat up. Um and then their summary was, um, hold on, go, go. recommendations, uh, athletic field committee with key stakeholder representation, establish effective policies that are enforced, uh, consider opportunities for enhancement at satellite fields, seek regular guidance and support from a turf specialist and consider further investment in field maintenance. Said there, was something else, right? there is something else. I'll see if I have it tucked away in my email yeah. somewhere so and i don't what's the date on that is there a date uh, there was a that? fertilizing thing correct so there was a whole they put together a whole plan and it was like a 12 month schedule and i think even you know what you do out years beyond that for how, when to aerate when to overseed what types of seed what types of fertilizer what to use when and it was a whole a whole schedule that uh, for us to follow well, um, for each of our field types too. Right for go, go do this on this field. You should do this. I haven't you seen know, now, this that now, this now. And it was yeah, it was it was very prescriptive, very comprehensive, and it was all the, again all the way down to which products we should be buying um, at which price points. And I haven't seen that either. So if you could, because I've talked about it before, yeah, we yeah. cannot seem to find that. So if you can mm -hmm. have that, that would be awesome. That'd be helpful. Yeah. Yep. And then I actually have to reach out to my guy again. Uh, I'm going to pull soil test, and then I usually. Do fertilizer based off those fall mm -hmm. fertilizer tests for next next year. Cool. The nice thing is Neil actually has done turf management before, which has a little bit better understanding. Mm -hmm. I think seeing that schoolhouse management would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Although I think probably Frank Rossi has the same yeah, the same type of yeah. the same yeah. information. Yep. What we don't want to do is we don't want to go to somebody who who sells herbicides right. that's our no. one thing is no like, you know that's mm -hmm. the one thing is like we're trying to find other consultants With and bias the one goal is don't Not go to bias. somebody no. who actually sells and that's hard to find a turf mm -hmm. management specialist that isn't involved in that mm -hmm. so hopefully frank and other people can give us mm -hmm. yeah. anything else on that i'm oh. anxious to hear what you find out at the conference and what we did mm -hmm. there's a so another thing at the conference, which I think is going to be really good, is heat in schools mm -hmm. and talking about like environmental climate mm -hmm. and in schools and the mitigation efforts. So it's really, I think there's some real cool things that are going to be happening there. And mm -hmm. we're pretty excited about checking it out. Um, so EV chargers. So as you know, Neil, you want to explain a little bit about what's going on? So we just got approval for the high school ones and we should they said by the end of the week have the approval for the elementary school ones oh. and awesome. they actually said <laughs> as early as next week start the install so we have to set up a couple things and jim was a part of this conversation so it's setting up how much we charge the community for it mm -hmm. so they have a, a suggested rate that we would charge that we utilize and we did talk about as a board and as a school saying you know staff members wouldn't be charged um, I want to confirm that because I you know somebody said to me, why is that? We're taxpayers and, you know, staff members should be charged, you know, 
So I want to get your feelings of that before we move forward with that. I think we do have to change and look at one of our policies mm -hmm. just to say, like, you know, that this is something that we can give to staff members. Oh, uh, because if we're uh, charging the community and not charging staff members, we don't have a policy that guides it. Does because the grant pays for part of this, right? Is there a grant yes. or is it yes. Does any part of that grant pay for a, a chunk of uh, like the electricity and delivery fees for a period of time or, or no? I know at the I village, for example, don't believe so. I'm pretty sure it was more the install, but okay, so that's the install. Covered. Like install the village got a grant to install theirs, the ones out in the park because that's oh, all right. Uh, I used to go charge down there. Mm -hmm. I used to be able to charge for free. And eventually they came out and told me, no, it, 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 village residents were then able to charge for free. Um, they said that they had uh, a certain amount of the grant that covered the actual charging for yep. a period of time. And then once that got cut off is when they cut it off to everyone else. So if we didn't have that, when we're paying for staff, it feels a little different. That said, it's common. Like when I worked at GE, employees were allowed to charge right. for free, right? Employees could, other people. Well, yeah, it's an so it's like it's a right. Yeah, but G's a, but G's a private yeah, company right. can do whatever they want. Right. They don't have like gift of public right. funds right. issues right. like we do, right? Yeah. Like it's a right. it's a common right. perk and a common right. incentive. Right. I just don't know how that works. So yeah. similar to, so Jim and I were talking about this beforehand. Um, you know, and he said no. It's very simple. He goes, our board policy that basically guides what we can do, like for um, the payment for tuition right mm -hmm. for teachers same idea like we can just put in there's a policy that jim specifically stated we would just state that you know any you know charging would be an ability mm -hmm. for that for staff to be green and incentive for them to be able to do that so as like mm -hmm. they would be able to charge on campus um I, we would just have to change that in the policy before we do it yeah. so we can bring it to policy committee but it does before we can make it public for our staff members we yeah, do how many are there? There'll be four charging stations here, two towers, four yeah. chargers, and then the same thing at the other yeah, And currently we have two or three <coughs> staff members who have the Oh, is that it? Exactly. So the other thing is it becomes an equity issue and a, you know, like are people then rushing to be here at, you know, 15 minutes earlier than everybody yeah. else to get the spots? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But it uh, but it could be an incentive for staff members you know, to say oh, the same person getting it every right. day. Yeah. Is that then right. imbalance? But, but also that that's something to go being green. It's an incentive for somebody to say, look, I was I would live very far mm -hmm. away. I was really nervous right. about it. Now I'm here. I mean, I could see a positive component of yeah. that to be able to increase the ability for people to use electric vehicles. Right. And then are we the costs? Yeah. Minimal. The the rate we would charge other folks is at our cost, or are we looking to make they recommend it was the cost of the electricity plus a little bit to well, cover the cost of the yeah. I think it was two, two to three times the amount of the cost for the electricity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does that compare to like the one at Hannaford or I mean, is that what everybody's have, doing? No, I, I just saw I, that. I don't have like car, so I don't there was Jim yeah, was kind of charged at home now. So the yeah. person really looking into all that. So I don't have all the yeah. answers on this. Yeah. I mean, what's right now? Well, I don't know what our rate would be like. My home rate's like 11, 12 cents a kilowatt. Maybe with delivery. I don't know what our not we pay. sure what hours it is on the top of my head. I have a connection there at Crossgate, so I'm going to call them and ask them what they do. The superchargers there are something like, they tend to be like 3X, but those are high, high speed. But um, okay. I don't know what, yeah. But that's not, we're not getting the high speed. No, no. I can see it being an issue. For the public, yes, because it is taxpayer, and it was brought to me by a public, you know, by, a, by, by a community member. Yeah. Uh, that's a good point. Let me bring it up at our right. facilities committee. Because yes, we want to incentivize it for staff members, but we don't have a policy that states mm -hmm. that that explicitly is there. Can we actually do it? I don't think the answer is yes. I don't right. think you no, can. So, so we have to kind of. And I would agree because you don't know. I mean, you incentivize. And people maybe are more inclined to if it's right. the next car to be an electric car. And then <clears throat> do we have issues with we have four chargers and eight people who have right. electric vehicles? And then, and then moving then it halfway you, through and people I mean, I mean, you have to be pretty right. specific about uh, some kind of rotation if it gets yeah. Because if people so, have an expectation that they just show up and plug in and they can't in a day, they're gonna be mm -hmm. bent out of shape and then there's also a parking incentive for the public, right? Where I'm assuming, I'm assuming we'll mark them as tollway zones for non-electric 
vehicles, which generally we have and, we have not had that conversation. And again, if you have a concert going on here where you know people are all you know, there's some spaces that I'm guessing are closer than a lot of the other spaces. Uh, they're actually the vehicles, right? They're going to be, gonna be right over there in the middle school. Line. Middle school, right. yeah, yeah, yep, closer to those back. Yep. And yeah, have, has there been a conversation about making those tar toy zones? I have not had a conversation on that. That's usually how they. I mean, they say specifically that they're yeah. electric vehicles only. Otherwise, I mean, it's definitely a conversation. Yeah, people park in there, then they're right. blocking access right. to chargers, so which you don't want. I don't know if that's something we need policy for. Do we have? marked toys i mean we have the uh fire zones and stuff and we have handicaps which are probably probably that's going to cause an issue at the elementary school because it's hard to tow out of there no because we don't have space so right now because we have the transportation people yeah. tow right down there mm -hmm. and then you take away four it's sites tight. right you're gonna you're making that a lot tighter for and people. where where are they going in the elementary school uh on the Backside, so one of the farthest spots from the building, okay. so they'll be the okay. last ones to fill up. Okay. But still, yeah. it's going to be tight. Okay. Kindergarten graduation or something. Right? Why do you think well, sometimes okay. staff? Like, yeah. I think sometimes in the morning when staff are trying to get in and you have all the transportation people there, and staff and that and those parking lots. The only time I've had an issue is like or maybe I will on Thursday when there's an early morning field trip and you have a bunch of other parents yeah. who are right. parking who wouldn't. All but again. Farm. It's only four right. spots, and it's, but then they that's they only also for a little bit of time up again after uh, yeah, after the bus drivers right. leave. But um, yeah, so I think the the what you guys are saying is it's typically a tow always no yeah. But I think we we look at it saying it is, mm -hmm. and then we go from there saying. So we might see signs. Okay. And our legal counsel basically says if we have a policy, it's okay. Correct. Cool. Yeah, but we just have to have it denoted somewhere that we can do that. Okay. And again, I, I see both sides of it as a as a community member. I I see it as you know, as a business to incentivize it for people mm -hmm. to, you know, to use electric vehicles and those things. It's it's also a smart way, right? Especially if you're being conscious of the environment. Do we know on average how much we'll be spending you? Um, to install the chargers? It, it just like, do we know like how many like charging a day, like would be X amount of money for the district? That I don't know. Can we get that information? Is this all part of that? Look, that green yeah. kind of incentive? I'll look into it. Right. Yeah. Okay. I was letting Jim handle a lot of yeah. things. I know. Yeah. I don't even know where he has those phones. If we can get like one charge and how much it would cost for a full charge, mm -hmm. then we can estimate out saying, you know, if we have five staff members and they're doing mm -hmm. it five times a day, you know, a week, like we can figure out how much money it would even cost the district to do that and incentivize that. So that way we're not saying it's a thousand dollars a year or fifty thousand dollars a year. You know, we can at least be clear and transparent mm -hmm. on how much it is. Do you think there would be an equity issue among staff where that's seen as a benefit that a handful of people get and other people don't? Yeah. I mean Hey, but I think the question is, is fair always equal? I know. Like, you know, I, know like the, I know. I'm just. I, I, I know, but I know. I totally agree the, with you. I I'm know. Running through the well, you know, I keep on thinking head. of that picture, you know, right. the kids over the fence and you have like the different levels. Right. But yeah, I, mean, I think people are going to say, that's not fair. You're not paying for my gas to get here, but you're right. paying for them. But we're also incentivizing. Is it you're putting in the effort and saying you want people to be green? I'm not sold one way or the other. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then, you know, the honesty, you know, if I had an electric car, even if it's here, having the ability just to charge it when I'm at work, right? That's true. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I, I get that. 
you know, even paying for it, I'd be fine with that. It's it, the ability is there. Mm -hmm. I don't have an electric car, but I can imagine it can be. I would be nerve wracking. Rob, is it nerve wracking? No. See, I would. It's uh, yeah. I mean, no more nerve wracking than gas. <laughs> so. Um, anything else on the EV chargers? That was good. Right? No, that was a good conversation. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so these project. Really, not a ton to update, right, Neil? I mean, well, what's sense, wrong right? with the drive? The... Oh, yeah, oh, the, the wrong. Uh, well, yeah. So every time in construction, <laughs> wrong grade, is that the word? yeah? So there's always going to be errors and and things that happen in construction, and the goal is to find them prior to finalizing your project. Uh, we're very lucky; we have a very good construction manager, um, and they oversee everything we do. So there was a grade that was wrong with the busing. I sent you guys the video yeah, ahead, yep. where the bus were coming in, it was much too high. Mm -hmm. So they have to regrade that, design a new system, and then put it in. We have enough money in um, all of our contingencies that it's no issue. And it doesn't all impact the schedule. And any I've asked that. Right. I said, no, it doesn't impact schedule. And you know, we, we plan for these things already. It's just like your house, you always plan a little bit extra mm -hmm. just in case things go wrong or whose problem it is to be able to address the situation. So when a mistake like that happens mm -hmm. in a project, we own the cost not always, not always. No. Okay. it depends on a lot of like what the architect said or who did the wrong so they're working through that okay. but they have to offset some of those things as well so we might own some of the cost but we someone still has to fix it right. and they build that in like okay. as a contingency into their budget knowing that if there's an error they have money to fix it already built in and it's not because mm -hmm. no one's perfect. Right. But if there's a bigger error and we don't have the money, then that's where you end up having the fight. Mm -hmm. And then you go through and you start talking about who pays for it, who doesn't. And usually everybody makes, usually there's always some compromises mm -hmm. on those things. Not we always. should be seeing walls in like November. Is that still? Is that, is that yeah. Right? So they're putting up the the steel now. And uh, finishing four now. Finishing four, okay. steel in November, probably walls by the end of like December. Yeah. Like let's. Mm -hmm. That's probably when we're going to see it. It's going to be cool. some cold walls going yeah. into something. Yeah, I mean, as long as everything's the forward, they can do what they need great. to do, right? Yeah. So at that point, yeah. once the below ground stuff is taken right. care of. But the building is basically on site. The lift is there, right? The lift, oh, the lift is, there. is there? The in-ground bus lift is oh, yeah. cool. on Friday. Yeah. Or the last week, yep. Yeah. They're looking at paving. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a lot of paving in there now. Yeah, and the paving will get done before the ground freezes, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Is Sweet. that the final paving or just like a first? It is, is the first binder coat, right. so the bottom layer to because you wanted that to go through the freeze thaw cycle. So if there's anything adjustments to make in the spring, we can do it then. Cool. And they are looking at doing some plantings too, trying to get those in. Hmm. So you know where our neighbor's house is, we're working mm -hmm. to make sure that we get some barrier for them up. Yeah, some so trees or something. Or... Yeah, and they're a couple of years old. The trees that are specked out for there, so oh. they're mm -hmm. not going to be tiny little ones. They're going to be a little bit larger. Mm -hmm. So for... <laughs> So we want to get them sooner rather than later. Right, get them in after the frost hits. It's, it's right you know, yeah, too just late. So. Your money yeah. Yep. yeah. So really, that's that's kind of it with the project, though, right? Like, yeah. DPC, we're moving forward, forward with that. We have approval. Um, they should be doing the lights in the pool within the next know. month here. Good. By the time they get parts in and everything else, so the pool should be much brighter. Awesome. And we're getting the, a bit the down desert air thing. Yeah, it's, that's it's, it's, thirty weeks. Later. Later. Okay. Yeah, supposedly thirty weeks. Okay. We'll, we'll see that when it finally comes yeah. through. <laughs> like, we're hoping that we can start, you know, and putting it in in July and August mm -hmm. of next year. But okay. That's all dependent on ordering. But better than we will. Mm -hmm. Is that it for capital projects then? And it's stagnant at this point. Yeah, status quo. more and more of the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just I didn't know if you heard any feedback on our lights from the homecoming or if there was anything about those since that was our first run with them. Uh, I was there. I didn't stay for the whole time. I was, I was there for about, at least for the girls' game. Uh, I did notice them, there was someone coming off and on, right? Was an issue with the generator? Oh, yeah. Generator yeah. tours. Generator tours, yeah. Tours. So we yeah. bought four brand new generators, and then that, we had them up and running during the week just to test everything out, make sure everything was running the way it should. Then of course, the night of the game, three of them did not want to stay running. Mm -hmm. So 
Thankfully, Frank had one at home and another community <laughs> member <laughs> ran home and got one. So we were running off of borrowed generators mm -hmm. on night one because the brand new ones were not working the way they should. Gaskets were blown on them. Ooh, wow. Oh, yeah, like so, bad, like. Yeah. So they had maybe nine, 10 hours on them max. Yeah. So that was warranted, I'm assuming. Or uh, we did get a re complete refund on two of them. And then we are purchasing two more yeah. better ones. Um, yeah. And yeah. we'll get it figured out and squared away. Yeah. yeah. So the generators we bought, I'm not going to say the name of the company, because um, we're being recorded, but they weren't as good as, and they're good. I mean, they're, they are top line generators. They just were not, you know, the carbs were sticking. We put stabilizer in them, and we didn't mm -hmm. have stabilizer in the first night. Brand new. Why would you put stabilizer in? Mm -hmm. You put stabilizer in the next time they ran perfectly. Mm -hmm. So just odd. Uh, mm -hmm. right? And I have a very cheaper, much cheaper mm -hmm. um, generator, and it worked wonders. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I have a yeah. hooked into the house. Yeah, I don't have one of those. Yeah. It was for camping, so that's one yeah. I have. And we're fine. But we just wanted to go over that. So there was an issue with the generators, but we know that we're working through them. And the scoreboard people still is not working all the time. So I just want to kind of talk about that quick. The soccer scoreboard doesn't always oh, work soccer. because it has to be hooked up to the generator because the power got taken down. Oh, yeah. And they were supposed to put up a temporary pole. Uh, National Grid is a little difficult sometimes to work with. And um, trying to get the temporary pole put back up and a new pole put in. It's it's a lot harder than we thought it was going to be. Yeah. So the companies are working together, and just the time frame on it, which is just not syncing the way it needs to. Mm -hmm. We have backups <laughs> to get this forward working, but we don't have that temp in yet. So I'm on that. So, the softball will get it all figured out. Hopefully, that will be the. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not working by softball, there's going to be a real problem. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, district signage. Maybe we put items from members. Matt brought up. Um, replace peeling warning signs. So Neil was looking into that. Mm -hmm. Well, that peeling was a warning sign. Uh, yeah. So in the football field, there is a the sign there. Sign. So Neil's looking at trying to see if we can have that replaced. So that was a dedicated sign. I didn't realize that. So when who that donated that? Yeah, it was dope for a coach. It was for I think it was Red Maple. I think donated that a while back. Joe said. Joe knows more of the details. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember him off the top of my head now. This, he died young. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that sign just, it's its kind of worn and faded mm -hmm. and I saw it. And so right. just something like that. So if you see things like that, let us know. But I think one of the things that we have to look at is when we do donations or when we do these things is to look at the durability mm -hmm. of some of this stuff because, you know, we just bought a tent and tent had no stickers on it. Right, mm -hmm. and we specifically said don't buy stickers because in five years the stickers are worn and they go. But if you buy the ones that are imprinted into the canvas, it stays a lot longer. So we just need to make sure that we're getting something that when people give the money or donate to the district, it it lasts a long period of time because mm -hmm. you don't want to get something and then three years later have to replace it over again. Right. Um, we did talk about solar power. I wanted to just kind of bring that up. Was that me? I think it was you. Yeah, it was me. Thank you. So something to think about for a new EPC, if we're going to do another one with this project, mm -hmm. is could we do solar power? Could we put it on buildings? I did see something really cool um, where when they're doing projects such as, like let's say you're doing a, over a parking lot, you actually put in a whole barrier over top and that's oh, all yes, solar. Covered parking. So that might be something that if the district was interested in looking and doing mm -hmm. that in the future, like for like, maybe coupled with an EPC in a parking lot mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that in the, in the future. So I just wanted to throw it out there as we're talking about new projects is adding solar and using it as an EPC can offset some of the, the price. What are the current incentives? Are I have no current? idea. Yeah. Yeah. I have, mm -hmm. I've had solar for years and I'm like, it's great. You love it? Yeah. Okay. We, it, pay, we don't pay any electricity for probably eight or nine months see, a year. We were and looking at we bank up, you know, you, you kind of bank up credit. It's crazy when they do it. My husband's still moaning about it, but it's um, when they give you, they let you put 80% of your usage. You have to actually show them utility bills mm -hmm. from the last year. Mm -hmm. We've done that. We did it almost 10 years ago. And 
um, then they put up the array that fits that criteria. Now ours are probably dated or you know, right. technology just keeps evolving, mm -hmm. but we do really well with it. And so, I'm, yeah. I'm really happy with it. We looked at it for the bus garage, but we needed so much space, so much of the array to actually have mm -hmm. it work that it wasn't cost effective mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. because you weren't having enough space. But if we can get a whole area, and that changes, I think yeah. it changes the game a little bit. I right. saw that. That's really a neat idea. That is. That's a good place to put it. Too. Right. And then right. you have covered parking, and then you right. have, mm -hmm. you have right. that. Yeah. Covered parking is very expensive, so you'd have to yeah. offset right. the two. Something to think about. Uh, the last thing is the potential capital project. You know, where is that lending that you have? On the left hand side under tab one. Thank you very much. Ideas. Ideas. So, if everybody sees that on the agenda, oh, ideas. It, yep. Yeah. So, he created an idea page. And we're starting to just throw things in here that we're thinking about. And I wanted to just show you, we had, we've been adding some ideas and stuff. So, track replacement, access. We know that's pretty much yeah. I have to, right? Because it's yeah. 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 Either that or we, throw it away. Yeah. 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 We know the track, yeah. something yeah. has to be doing. Athletic fields, upgrades, yeah. irrigation at satellite fields, and storage building for equipment over at the satellite fields. Again, the track replacement, one of the things about that is, do you just replace that track, but it's still not big enough to have soccer on it and all these other things. So mm -hmm. if you extend the track and, and you know change the capability, you get more multi-use. So mm -hmm. really looking at the whole athletic field itself is going to be, I think, something that we really have to dig into. And to get irrigation over there, you have to take a well, I assume? No. no, we have water, but we just have to run a new line off of the main out. And then we would have to put in an irrigation system. system right. So what is a one inch now? We have a one inch feed, some field hydrants that are out there. We can basically hook up a large garter goes to, which doesn't put out enough water in order to irrigate what we need. Mm -hmm. So it could help some small areas, but by the time you move on to another one, the first one would probably be dried out. So. Mm -hmm. But to do it right. But to do it right, you would have to have irrigation, more, more water, more volume. Mm -hmm. And that would depend on if you're going to put a new track and field system in do you do it here or do you do it over there that's the goal oh, as well yeah. like do we huh right put in like a big well that's like big well that's the, see these are the conversations i need to thought about that so, oh, complex. so i've had yeah. multiple like the whole athletic complex so there's yeah. different schools of thoughts right mm -hmm. so we can look at reconfiguring here maximizing the space do we have the have. room to make it really nah we would need about another 50 feet on the right hand side of like where we don't own it or we don't own it yeah you know, if we could if, if we had the ability and a magic button to that land you could reconfigure back there otherwise it'd be pretty tight you could we look at it we absolutely could um and try to refigure something again we don't we haven't really spent enough time doing that but, just make it an idealist yeah exactly but there is enough you could look at over here and reconfiguring or mm -hmm. we could look at over there and then creating more green space over here mm -hmm. you take out the track green it up or do whatever yeah and then you could make a multi-use facility over there that's interesting so something to think about but then it's all site work you also would have to put in plumbing you, you can't put in like two classrooms over there to make it <laughs> yeah, yeah no right. i don't think so <laughs> make, make <it> <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. We got, uh, it's a phys ed, uh, learning space. Right. So. Yeah. But it's an option, right? So I think right. you just have to look and see what are we, what does the outcome of our facilities truly look mm -hmm. like for the next 20 years? That's going to be the bigger conversation. I think we're going to have to get groups together, have some time. That's why I don't think this is something you can rush into. No, no. That's a really interesting idea. Right. Like, I've been thinking about that phone for a while, but then what? But after you do all this turf management, right? In the next couple of years, we'll just plow it all up. <laughs> and then, what do you? And how often does it get used over there? So there's a whole. And what about changing fields and everything else? And then you're, it's just, again, there's a conversation to be had there. Um, field lighting. So where do you put it? When do you put it? Mm -hmm. Roofing is not cheap, and we have a lot of roofs in this campus that will have to be done. Um, middle school roof is original, so out of warranty, 22 years now. Mm -hmm. Gym roof, pool roof. So did the whole ladder thing happen, or is that still in the works? That's working through. That's got to go through state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you're looking at a few million dollars just for roofs. Air, if, you know, if you want to do air conditioning or UV vents, especially with new regulations that are 
correct, probably coming out. So that's something we put on to talk about. Uh, paving, I mean, in general, I mean, if you look at it, it's already kind of falling apart out here, but do we reconfigure? Do we have an opportunity to reconfigure the mm -hmm. way the buses come in or cars come in? Because it is congested. People have always had issues. Yeah. So that might be something we want to look at. Um, LED lighting upgrade for the pack and, you know, across the board, that's probably another five to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. But there would be an efficiency grab on that, right? Wouldn't there potentially be some? When you're doing like like the stage lighting, I don't know no, if there's going to be okay. a lot with that one because it's like that professional theater quality right, one. So right. you might get some, but okay. good. I, again, yeah, I have no idea. I, I agree with you. Let's look, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Abatement, I think, is always something that we want to look at. So, you know, we could look at our classrooms and say, everything's wonderful and we, we're going to keep it as is but we still have 1960s classroom with 1960s asbestos and all the you know in the majority of the rooms so do you have do you take an opportunity to start updating you know some of these things so just doing abatement you mean like the like i've done a project where we yeah. went through the whole district and we we've yeah up, we got rid of all the asbestos put all new floors and then painted all the rooms you know, so and that would be mostly this campus. Yeah. Is that what you're yeah. So I did that. We did that as in another district I was in, and you got rid of all the asbestos. You have updated all the classrooms, and you you set the district up for the next twenty years. Yeah. It's not pretty. Um, it's not. No. It's, yeah. I'm split on that one. With the word, I mean, asbestos. It doesn't become a problem until we need to do something with exactly. it. Exactly. Right. Where. You know, and it's not right. It, it's not going to hurt anybody, right? Being in there, no. I mean, it's a scary sounding thing, but as long as you don't disturb it, you right? Know where it is, you just can't bother doing it. Well, you can, you just have to abate it when you yeah. do it, exactly. And it becomes right. part of the project that you're running right. wherever you're, you know, whether it's new floors or you know, right. classrooms. And I think like abatement comes with updating, right? So then mm -hmm. a lot of the building is functional, but do you update? Like, what part of the buildings do you update? Is ceilings on here? So ceilings are not on here but they are things that we've talked about yeah because i know we, we talked about we like we need all those ceilings. yeah it, part of me likes the idea of wh whatever we I mean, there's going to be a bunch of this stuff on the list that we do mm -hmm. we know some of this athletic stuff but um the kind of thing where the impact will be felt across the whole mm -hmm. campus and something like ceilings as silly as that sounds like it's such a difference in those hallways right. where they are and that's you know the sort of thing where when kids leave in the summer and come back but it feels like a whole new school and it feels it's that fresher newer it just feels crisper right. and cleaner mm -hmm. right but ceilings can cost a million dollars no they're expensive it's yeah. unbelievable yeah. not cheap but no but i agree like ceilings oh we talked about doors and hardware mm -hmm. so there's a lot of different ways. You mean classroom doors or yeah the internal all internal so doors. there's a few different ways that we can approach it yeah. is that for safety well or partly yes um because we have different key systems throughout the building depending on age of it so we still have master keys from the 1950s that are still in use and some hardware we have keys that are from the 1980s and then nothing's on one basic program so it makes that much harder to get people new keys if we need them um there's certain doors that don't lock the way they should right now so we're working on upgrading that hardware um but everything well, a little bit more uniform would be safer. Mm -hmm. Go through and rekey all the doors, make sure that there's one key or two keys, and all you know, going through the right key system is expensive. Mm -hmm. Uh, some school districts are going to electric keys, not sure if I'm sold on that or not. Didn't Robin say her old district? Yeah, and you can do it, and you can, but you can lock down right away. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of things positive with it. Um, we do not have a generator, yeah, so. Well, right, look, I could just like electric keys. It's like, oh, well, that wouldn't work, would it? <laughs> so we would probably run a generator. So some again, and that's and that's kind of where this list probably electric in the buses. next three months, yeah. right, will be yeah. even bigger. And that's yeah. Like, yeah. Well, another you talk about solar, you can do battery backup with right. solar too, yeah. which makes you not need a generator. And you get, you know, whether it's 12, 24, 36 hours run time off of yeah. batteries. So we also talked about additional class space if it's needed. How would you, you know, reconstruct, re reconfigure some of the building for that? When are we up for a demographic study again? Is that soon? So Jim's been doing that. So Jim was actually utilizing data to do it. We just did it 
I thought we're supposed year. to do one. Is it not by law or is it not by? No. I thought it's like every four years. We're no, supposed we to just do did one two years ago. So we would just two years. Yeah. yeah. And then we just did another one last year, just kind of using the numbers. So we wouldn't do another. I don't think there's a law for a demographic study. No. 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 Not that I know of. But we just finished that. That, that, was, that was two years ago. Yeah, it does. We, we get to know going into a, making right. decisions for a capital right. project. Right. Do we definitely? Well, we're using not. the one that we had already would help us kind of understand sure. where we are. Right. In the library media center. But there's changes there that weren't on the roadmap, right? Like the, right. there's the new uh, bottom of Crow Ridge. There's right. development going in right. there that right. didn't Pretty exist small, at all. Is, is it? Yeah. yeah. Like 10 there's, or 12, uh, yeah. The bigger one is still going to be that Albany. Oh, the one back because that's in job in the country club. Yeah, I isn't that isn't that a lot of uh, all ours? Huh? No, it's all ours. Yeah. Is it isn't isn't it a lot of uh, like it's not zoned as like retirement uh, fifty plus, but isn't it isn't the expectation demographically it's like fifty plus? So there was other parts in Warriorsville that they, that was sold that way. Too. Yeah, and it didn't end up that way. It never yeah. ended up that way. So I don't um, really buy that. It was kind of set up like that. What is that called? Doesn't run. Doesn't run yeah. was originally. Oh, really? Huh. Supposed to be. And now yeah. it's you know there's kids in there. Yeah. Huh. Uh, the library media center, for us, I mean that's a large space, and it's like the same. very outdated, right? <laughs> and you can reconfigure that. You can even add a classroom into it. Like there's a lot of space there, and then there's also that like that little computer area that's right. a classroom. So that's a huge chunk of area that's right for. The work the cafeterias the commons those could be updated so there's again so i think it, i just we just want to kind of keep brainstorming here so if you're talking to community members or you're talking to other board members or you're talking just add in ideas or anything that comes to your head and just add to that idea so we can keep kind of mm -hmm. trying to figure out how we start addressing some of these things yep. anything i'm missing so far you know, and I just keep adding. Yeah. No. Is there some stuff in there that we can do incrementally, either on our own or outside of it? I'm thinking about things like rekeying doors. Like, do you can our facilities, folks? Like, do you can your guys rekey? Some door? of the doors can themselves they... need to be replaced as well, right? Uh, just because the age of women, they're not up to code anymore. Um, so and by we... that you mean like full frame replacement or just just a new? Some of them could use a new frame. Yeah. Because they've been reworked and redone however many times down the frame has too many holes in it and it needs to be upgraded. Um but some of that stuff, yes, we can do in-house. Mm -hmm. But to to that extent, it'd be easier to do it this way. Mm -hmm. So one so of the things slowly that, we are yeah. every handle we upgrade now is still going through one key system. So we are upgrading. Oh, so we're already doing that sort of like as we if we have to switch. swap one out due to breakage or yeah, uh, yeah. Right, switching out. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we we did when we're doing the elementary school project is the same thing we're doing now is put everything down. Yes, right. Yeah. Throw it all down, and then you know Jim and I can look at where do we budget, how do we budget for these things, can we throw in the hundred thousand dollar projects mm -hmm. into this to be able to offset you know, put a generator count as a hundred thousand dollar project. Right? Could we add that in instead? Mm -hmm. So things like that, and you are there incentives for it, and just bang them out. So look, how can we get these things done? But add them in first and see what has to get done, and then kind of develop a plan of mm -hmm. what can get done in a project, what can get done outside of a project. For example, yeah, we got two secure vest fields. None of them were in technically a project, thing, right? Mm -hmm. But yet they were originally talked about in the in a capital project years ago. So mm -hmm. Same idea. Like, how can we get things done and accomplished, and maybe not in a thirty million dollar project? Yeah, yeah, yeah just because when you look at like our ladder, for example, like the the hourly rates that we end up paying for some of these, if, if we're able to do stuff in house, the savings is yeah. right. tremendous. <laughs> right. I mean, I know we can't go hang that ladder ourselves. Yeah, or, I mean, I'll go do it for half, half that exactly. Ladder, right? Just <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but the, uh, you know, are there things like that that if we kept it out of a project, maybe there could be, you know. You, you maybe don't do it all at once, but incrementally, like rekeying locks, like this or things like that. Oh, savings. One hundred percent agree. I think that the only concern that I will always have is if we do not have professional people on staff who know specifically yeah, yeah, how to do it. Sure. Are you getting mm -hmm. the quality thing that will last you as long as you possibly mm -hmm. can? Mm -hmm. 
that's always just a concern that I have. But you guys, they refinished the bathrooms this year and they look great. Awesome. Yeah. That's also be the same concern with the long bin, though. <laughs> yeah. that's, that that is, that's actually more I've of a concern. Seen, I've yes. seen a lot that of those. Is, uh, <laughs> yeah, that is uh, true. Yeah. So, but I totally agree. Yeah. Anything okay. else? Anything for the bit of the order that we missed on our no, agenda? No. No. Yes. Uh, I, I looked it up. It was July of 2018 was the facilities meeting where we went over the field management plan. I don't have a copy of the field management plan, but July of 2018 is when the field management plan was delivered to us. Um, and that would have that would have been uh, my lawyer at the time, mm -hmm. and also Francis would have received a copy. I don't know. Do we keep those mailboxes archived? Where we can go back and like search them. I have no idea. That would be maybe we might. I'm sure, they, I'm sure those would be sitting there. I, I, if I remember correctly, there was a physical copy that was supposed to be filed somewhere. There might be reference. somewhere. So, it might be somewhere yeah. in my. But I don't know if that helps July of 2018, but July of 2018 yeah. is when it was. I found the agenda. Well, it. I came in December of 2019 and I've never seen it. <laughs> I've heard about it, but I've never seen it. So it'll be good to see if we can find it and then work on it. So thank you for finding it. Anything else? No. Yeah. Thank you.